Uh, welcome. This is for, I guess I should have written that here. This is for Math uh, 360. And this is on one a day 2.1. Uh, so we're talking about the properties of probability here. Uh, and so our in our notes for the class, we have uh, the following theorem. Uh, the first part is that the probability of A is equal to 1 minus the probability of the complement of A. And just as a reminder, up here we have the three conditions that are requirements for a polynomial, or for a polynomial. That's awesome. Uh, for a probability function, right? So P of A is greater than or equal to 0. The probability of the entire universe of outcomes, right? The entire set is equal to one. And then that, that if A1 union A2 union A3, if these are disjoint and uh, exhaustive, in other words, if this is uh, the union of these sets are uh, complete the entire set S and they're disjoint, meaning that the intersection of the sets are empty, then you can write that the union of these sets, the probability of the union of those subsets will equal some of the individual probabilities, okay? Uh, so those are really helpful, and we're going to use them multiple times during uh, these proofs, okay? So uh, so this is our, our statement, uh, theorem 1a, the probability of a is equal to 1 minus the complement, probability of complement of a. Uh, so to prove this, um, I, I like this little proof. It's pretty cool. Uh, first, we're going to start off by uh, note, noting that um, the set S can be written as the union of both A and its complement. Since A and its complement are by definition disjoint, uh, the union of those two things will be uh, the entire set S because A is the set S, which is a subset of S, and A complement is everything outside of that. Okay, so in other words, the entire set of S, that doesn't include A. Okay, And as I mentioned, uh, by definition, A intersecting with A complement, uh, with its complement, is is defined to equal uh, the empty set. So uh, those two properties are really helpful because that's exactly what we need for this example here. Uh, and so we can just simply state that the probability of the set using uh, property B here, we know that that is equal to one. In other words, the, prob the probability of the entire set, it's gonna happen at some point. And so we have exactly that equal to one, uh, but that also is equal to the probability of S but S is equal to A union A complement. Okay. Uh, and that's really nice because now we can use the fact that uh, A and A complement are both disjoint and exhaustive, meaning they make up the entire set. So I can use property C here uh, to simply write this as P of A, the probability of A plus the probability of its complement. And so here we have, if we just look at these uh, two parts, we have exactly what we needed to show. Uh, all we need to do is move a complement over to the other side. Uh, so adding the additive inverse, so subtracting uh, that from both sides, we have one minus p, uh, the probability of a complement is equal to the probability of a, which is, of course, exactly what we wanted to show. Okay, all right, I hope that was helpful. And then we're going to jump to part b. Uh, in our next proof. Well, the brief intermission, I just needed to write this down. So uh, this is part B. So the probability, want to show the probability of the empty set is equal to zero. Uh, and so this is really nice because if we make the observation uh, from our work here in part A, that uh, if we say, let's say that um, I don't know, we can say A is equal to the empty set, then a complement or a prime here is equal to S. Okay, and that's my definition. So the empty set is everything that is outside, or the complement of this empty set is everything that's in the set. Okay, uh, and so we can use exactly our results from part A. So note, apply part A. Uh, so the complement of A is uh, S, and so plugging that directly into above, we have the probability of A, which is the probability of the empty set, as we've described here, is equal to 1 minus the probability of A complement. But the probability of A complement is 1 minus the probability of S, 
and by uh, part B, the property B here, this is also equal to one. So this is an equal one minus one, which is indeed equal to zero, which is what we wanted to show. Okay, all right, uh, hold on one sec. We're gonna write down part three or part C, I guess, and uh, start with that proof next. Welcome back. All right, so we want to show that if A is a subset of B, then the probability of A is less than or equal to the probability of B. Okay, all right, so to prove this one, um, I should have written proof here too. Uh, so to prove this one, uh, it's going to require a little bit of ingenuity here, and this is going to be a little bit of fun. Uh, so let's start by supposing, I suppose, we can write B in this interesting way. So let's write B as A union B intersect A complement. And we can write A intersections with B intersect A complement equal to the empty set. Okay. So uh, that's really nice because that allows us then to use property C. So using uh, property C, uh, taking the probability of the of this side, we get P of B is equal to P of A union B intersect A complement. which uh, we can write as P of A plus P of B intersect A complement. Okay. And here comes the really nice thing. Um, since this is about to be greater than or equal to zero by property uh, A, the property A of the, of what it means to be a probability, okay? then that means that this left-hand side has got to be greater than or equal to uh, the probability of A, okay? Which means then that uh, if I subtract of P of A over, then uh, P of B intersect A complement is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, and that gives us then our desired result. Okay, all right, we're going to jump into, uh, I think it's the last part, part D. Uh, in this one, we assume that A is an event. And what we're trying to show is that P of A is less than or equal to one. Uh, so we can use the combination of our, our last theorem that we just showed, our last part, part C, uh, from our proof here, and then also part B of the definition. Um, and so uh, we just set up using C on this one. So our proof here is really straightforward. So uh, given A is a subset of the sample space S, okay, so then P of A is uh, less than or equal to P of S by our previous result here, and then by part B, uh, the property B, P of S is equal to one exactly. So uh, that one just falls out directly. I hope that makes sense. And then uh, part E is going to be really fun. I really like this part. So let's go ahead and write it out here and we'll jump on it. So um, part E said uh, A and B are events. And we have that the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersect B. Okay. So this is what we want to show is happening here. Uh, and so to do that, um, we're going to look at uh, a, another way of writing uh, this union and then utilize uh, property C to uh, build that out. Okay. Uh, so I I think I might need some extra room. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump on a new sheet of paper. And so theorem one of uh, part E, uh, we have A and B are subsets of S, and we want to show that uh, the probability of the union of A and B is equal to the probability of A and the probability of B minus the probability of A intersect B. Note here that if A and B um, are disjoint, in other words, if A intersect B is equal to the empty set, 
the probability of the empty set is zero. And this is exactly uh, the condition C um, in the definition of the probability. Okay. Um, so we are going to want to utilize this idea and uh, connect to this. So let's take a minute and just try and get it like our, a picture to maybe uh, make a little bit more sense of this situation here. So here's A and here's B, and this is the universal set S. Okay, And so we want to write this as the intersection of, uh, or the union, let's say, of two disjoint sets, um, but who still equal the same area. So we're still looking at uh, A union B here. But can we think of a way to write that A union B, which is all of uh, that is combined in these two circles, including the overlap, um, but where we are clearly having a disjoint set. And uh, one way to do that is to literally just say, okay, well, let's look at all of A. So we're going to have all of A. And then I want to uh, think about, well, what could I write that um, in conjunction with? And so, uh, because we want both, I'm going to say A union. And how would I write this section over here that does not include A, but does include all of B? OK, and if we think about, well, not A means it's the complement of A. And I do want B, so I really want what I'm looking for is B intersected with the complement of A. OK, and so if we use this then connection, uh, not A means it's this is parts of A, so it's not there, but it is also including B. So B intersect A complement with the union of A gives us then recovers us A union B. And clearly, these are then disjoint, which then allows us to consider uh, the fact that we can use part C of our definition of probability to write the probability of A union B as the sum of those two individual probabilities. Probability of A, the union becomes the plus sign plus the probability of B intersect A complement. Okay, so that's the start. And now we need to do something with this thing, this probability of B intersect uh, A complement. And so if we start to think about, OK, how might we represent uh, this part B here in a way that would help us connect? Well, notice if we look at what we're trying to get to, right? We have probability of A U B, that's good. The probability of A, that's good. But look, we have probability of A intersect B plus probability B. So we need this part right here to kind of equal that. So that kind of gives us some intuition on how we might think about constructing a set here of B. In particular, if we think about, okay, I want to reconstruct uh, that value of B. So what can I do? Well, if I look at the set B, how can I write that as another disjoint set? How might I think about B as a disjoint set? And so, well, if I think about A intersect B, well, that would be A intersect B would be this part right here. That could be helpful. And uh, I want that also with A. Hmm. So what could I do that would allow me to write? Well, if I have A intersect B, that would be this part. And I'm trying to recover B. So what if I had a union of the complement of A intersected with B? Let's write that out and see if that makes sense. So if we have A intersect B, okay, that's this part, okay? And then I'm gonna union that or kind of put it together with, and so what else is, what's left to be? Well, isn't that what's left to be is this part right here? And that we already saw was uh, A complement intersection with B. And everything, in other words, everything that's not in A intersected with B. So A intersect B, that's this part. 
A, the complement of A, anything outside of A, and it compl intersected with B is this other part of the circle. And so there's there's their value of B. Now it should be it should note that A uh, intersect B is the same thing as B intersect A, and that's also true if that's the complement. Okay, so there's the commutative property of intersections of sets. Uh, that's a given property. And so uh, these two are actually the exact same thing. And again, just to kind of reiterate this one more time, what are we saying here? We're saying, okay, so A intersect B, that's this area. And then I wanna get all of B. So I also want to include the union of everything else that's not in this area. Well, what is what is this? Well, that's exactly what we wrote over here. It's the intersection, the complement of A. So we want it outside of A but it also includes the intersection of B, okay? All right, so then if we take the we take the probability of both sides here, this is clearly a disjoint set just as before. So probability of B is equal to probability of A intersect B. The union by property C makes us write it as a plus probability of A complement intersect B. Okay, so now I have, I'll call this star, I'll call this double star. Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do here then is I'm going to solve in star for A uh, complement intersect B, which is the same as in double star, and then I'm going to solve that and plug that in and see what I get. So solving star, I get P of B minus P of A intersect B is equal to P of A complement intersect B. Okay, so now if I plug this into I plug that into double star. I think I could squeeze it in right here. Um, I'm going to have P of A union B equals P of A plus, and P of B intersect A complement. Well, that was plus P of B minus P of A intersect B, which was exactly what we were hoping to show. Okay, I hope it's simple, and I'll see you in the next video.